Welcome back to Forby. Welcome back to my workshop. Now, it's been a few weeks since I've been in here. And when we were in here last, we were looking at a door repair for the 110. And um, since we were there, I've been looking at some finer details. And uh, there's some things I want to show you before we carry on. But I'm going to attempt to finish off that repair today. Um, get it welded in. And... Uh, and show you the steps that I'm going to perform in order to do what needs to be done. But there's some bits and pieces that you need to have a look at as well. So let me show you that. Okay, so we're here at the bench and as you can see, I've got quite a few of these repair sections now. Um, far more than I actually need, I think. Um, but there are a couple of things I just want to show you because it's quite plain to me that there's more than one manufacturer making these in terms of repair sections and I'm going to say, say that there's possibly two or three manufacturers making these and they all slightly differ in in various ways um, and I'm going to pick out which one I think is the best the best one to purchase for the job now let me show you first what I've done here this is um, the one that we were working on in the last video it was cut and it was mitered and um, it was mitered to, to fit there and what I did is I just wrapped a bit of masking tape around the end of it and I gave it a good old coating with uh, Corollus S2 um, rust stabilizing primer um, ready to be welded in obviously what I didn't want to do is contaminate where I was going to weld so we've got two pieces here this one still needs a little bit of trimming just to fit this one's about right um, and they fit there and there nicely. I don't know if you can catch that in frame. So let me put these to one side just for a second because this is really what I want to show you. Now this is the original section of the door and as you can see it was all rotted away which is why we wanted to deal with it and cut it out and replace it. Um, but the first thing I want to show you is the cross section here. Now, if we look carefully at the radiuses and, and feel the radiuses with our fingers, out of our potential repair sections that I've got here, the first thing I'm going to do is take these ones, these two that I have here, and discard them. And the reason for that is these aren't Defender repair sections. These are good for series Land Rover doors or the Safari door on the back of a Defender. The profile is incorrect for Defender doors. Don't ask me why I've got them, I just have. So, I don't know if we can see just down the end there. If we highlight the difference between the two, the Defender bottom doors, firstly, have got a row of holes in the top. And if you flip them over, they've also got three drain holes in the bottom. The series repair sections and the series doors don't have that. So let me get rid of those two. So that leaves me with three repair sections. Now, I had a couple already. I mean, you saw me mitre and paint one of them. This is the one that I was taking slithers off. And what we notice is that there's a very distinctive shape to this. And it's kind of a trapezium that's very slightly lopsided. And this one Let's see if we can get it to match up. This one doesn't match up particularly well. This one for the height matches up better 
fact, let me turn it around. I think it might be this way around. This one matches up better, but still not brilliant. This one is a better height match and the drains seem far better formed than on this one. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can bring it to the camera for you. See the shape of the drain, the way it's been pressed into the metal. Let's bring that one in for you to have a look at as well. See, it's a lot larger there and slightly better formed. But what is interesting out of all of these is when we flip them over, that one has a flat back, that one has a flat back. You can see by the spot welds, they're different manufacturers, different quantity of spot welds on there too. Um, these are the repair sections we were dealing with the other day. Flip them over. They've also got a flat back. And this is our the one that we were cutting the other day. That one has also got a flat back. But if we flip these ones over, these ones have got a profiled back. And there's a very small recess that runs the length of these. And if you look at the original Defender door, you will see that profile gets raised there. So, why am I telling you this? Well, I'm telling you because in my own mind, I think out of the possible suppliers where you could buy this repair section from, I think the repair section that comes closest in terms of its actual fabrication size and accuracy is this one. And this one came from the paint man. And I bought this at Newbury um, a couple of weeks ago. One of my customers, Colin, came up to me um, when I was running my stall and he got one of these in his hands. And I'm like, where'd you get that from? I need to get one. And he pointed me in the right direction. And it came from the paint man who's a fellow trader um, he's got quite a few repair sections on his stall and he sells all the Land Rover colour coded paint. Now, I've got a feeling that these cost £13 a piece and I bought two of them. Um, this one I'd already got on order from eBay um, and this was about 15 quid. Um, but that was a landed price. You've got to take into account when you order stuff, mail order, that there's a postage price in the mix as well. But when I start looking at these and analysing them in detail, I favour the Paint Man ones because of the shape there and the shape here, it fits the nicest. None of them are perfect, but it fits the nicest out of all of them. Now here's another observation that I want you to see. This is the second row door. Well, let's show you there. This is the second row door, and what we're looking at is down at the bottom here, where the section has rotted out. I don't know if you can make out that line there. Let me just put a scribe on it. Can you see that? That doesn't look to me like it's welded. Can you see the movement in it? Which suggests the original door frames were not welded along that back seam, but welded only over the top. Now, that's been a bit of a puzzle for me as to whether or not we weld them on the underside as well. Um, but I think we're going to be safe enough just to weld them on the top. Because it's quite obvious, when you give it a push, 
you can see the movement between that surface there and that surface there. If you look down the line, you can see the movement. Now, this is so rusted out, this is, it's got to be original. So I think that is the way I'm going to tackle it and just weld it from above.